So hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Taz Life Mentors and I am your educator Revan. Now in this video I am going to be brief about the CSI UGC NET 2024 cut-off credit. Now there have been many videos that have been going around all the social media platforms especially on YouTube. You might be catching those up and uh, they are predicting the cut-off rank to be on the higher side like 110, 112 and they are indicating only two groups like CSI UGC NET JRF and the LSU. But according to the NPA there has been three types of groups that have been patterned in this CSI UGC NET 2020. First one is usually the JRF, the second one is the LF and the third one is the NET no fellowship to PhD. So that's why the cutoff may vary a bit due to this patterning system. The second thing is that the level of the question paper. Now we all know that CSIR's date was, it was highly deferred for a month. You were probable to give the exam on in the month of June. And uh, then what happened is that there was an alleged paper leak case. We had already made a video over that, a short video over that. And uh, your exam dates were deferred for one month. And now you had to give the exam at the end of July. Now your answer keys and the question paper and the challenging portion, all those sections is over almost. And now you will, you are all waiting for your final results or the final cut off to come in. And we think that it will come within a month. But what will happen to the cut off? Will it go soaring high or will it come down? So let's see one by one. Let's analyze the paper first. Now if you look into the morning shift at the beginning, if you look at the part A of the morning shift, so part A was mostly easy to, I would say, moderate, okay. So it was an easy to moderate section in case of theater, you can see the life cycle morning shift exam. The part B was tough, was really, really tough. And if you tell about the part C, it was very tough, okay. So I have personally seen the question paper of both the shifts especially the morning shift and the evening shift and I have found that the part C of the morning shift was very very good. Okay. So if you take for a student, a um, student who can qualify CSI and UGC net easily with the JRF bank, he or she might get around 7 to 10 questions correct. Okay. A normal student who can qualify JRF in the part A. So that makes this around say 14 to 20 marks, right? And in case of part B, it was tough. It was very tough. I wouldn't say that. It was tough. Okay. So uh, take it around another out of uh, you, are, you need to attempt around 35 questions. So take it around 15 to 17 questions that a normal person can get correct. 30 to 34 marks. Okay. 30 to 34 marks can be taken from this section generally. But the part C was really tough. Most of the students have been complaining that they weren't be able to complete part C at a right time if they had started with part A or if they have started with part B. Again, some students complain that they, whenever they started with part C, they couldn't get part A or part B right at the time. So I would consider if someone starts with part A and part B, he or she might get around 10 questions correct out of 25 in case of part C. That brings it to 40 marks. So 40, 30 and 40. So this rounds it up around 84 and 40, 34, 74 and 20 makes it around 90. So for a normal person to get a JRF without any negative marking, we would expect someone to get it around 84 to 94 for the first shift. Okay. But still, still to be on a safer side, we are giving it a plus 10 score over this period. We are you would say for class 10 is much higher. We are giving just 5, that's why it was done. So that would bring it around 89 to 99, uh, around 89 to 99. That is a much better scale for that. But still, the scientific cutoffs I would show you in a while. So, what would you say about the overall nature of the paper? So, I would say that the paper was really tough, okay? So, really tough, right? It was really tough. Level of questions again, really tough. Both these are very real. The difficulty level out of 10, I would suggest is as 8.5 out of 10. So it was 8.5 out of 10 for the morning shift. My predictions tell you that the cutoffs for the RF would be around this case. Take 10 marks less for the LF, that is 79 to 89, and another 10 marks less for the PhD section, that is the non fellowship PhD section, 69 to 79. So you might be seeing the dip in the cutoff in this case. So, let's go to the evening. 
So evening shift part A was moderate. Okay, so it was not so easy. I've seen the paper personally. Part A was moderate. Part B was again moderate to tough. Part B was moderate to tough. And if you look into the part C, it was very, very tough. Okay. So in class time, I use the term very tough, but this is this was really very, very, very tough for part C in the evening shift. Now, if you look into part A for a student to begin with, you can say a general student category student uh, or a open category student for a qualification. He or she might have attempted around uh, five to nine questions correctly, and that counts to counts it to ten to eighteen marks, right? So ten to eighteen marks. For part B, as it was moderate to tough, out of thirty-five questions, you can take this around twenty to twenty-two questions. That is forty to forty-four marks. And for the part C, again the same thing has been applied over here. If someone starts with A and B, we are taking that situation only for the political day. It was very tough, right? So you can expect it around uh, say nine to ten questions over here. So that counts it to thirty-six to forty marks. So if you calculate this together, we will get a huge dip in the examination. Rate. Okay, so over here the same thing was applied. Again, down here the same thing would be applied over here. Okay, so take it as 36 plus 40, make it 76 plus 10, 86 to 18 plus 44. That means it goes around 52 to 40. That is 90. So 86 to 92. Again, give it a plus 5 over here. 91 to 97 would be mine. Predicted cut off for the evening shift. 91 to 97 for the JRF. 81 to 87 for the LS. And 71 to 77 for the open category non fellowship PhD. Overall, I would again suggest that it was really tough. Evening shift was also really tough. Same thing over here. Level of pressure. The difficulty level for evening shift I would give it nine out of ten. A bit higher than that of the morning shift. If you compare with the part C, part C section is so that was a bit tough. So this is my prediction. Now, what the scientific prediction of our test life sciences say? So this is the cutoff prediction, exact cutoff prediction. Okay, so this is the exact cutoff prediction that has been predicted by the experts of the Atlas Biological Survey or test section. <coughs> so for general, the cutoff has been predicted for the morning shift to be around 92 to 90. And for evening shift to be around 90 to 96. So if we go back, if what I have predicted for the morning shift, the cutoff was around 89 to 99. So here, the cutoff has been predicted to be around 92 to 93. For the next shift, it was around 91 to 97. So the same thing has been applied down here, 90 to 96. So it is almost the same. That would be in the same way. So the median value for the cutoff over here for the general category can be for the both shifts can be around 95. Okay, so 95 marks. If you are able to get 95 marks, 95 से ज़्यादा या फिर 95 के आसपास, तो आप almost sure रह सकते हो कि इस बार आपको ज़िआर मिलने वाला है, ठीक है? ये मेरा वादा है, ये आपको मिलने वाला है, क्योंकि last time अगर इससे पहले वाला और उससे पहले वाले exams को अगर आप यहाँ के देख लो, तो वहाँ पे जाके आप ये देख सकते हो कि 101 में भी आपको ज़िआर मिला था, वो वाला question tough था, ये वाला question बहुत tough, तो 95 में ज़िआर पक्का हो सकता है, बहुत चिप Net LS के लिए the same thing would be applied 82 to 92, 80 to 90. Now I think this is going to be around 85. Okay, so 85 उससे भी कम जा सकता है. ये 85 से नीचे जाने का संभावना भी है यहाँ. ठीक है LS के लिए. So 85 से नीचे भी हो सकता है. Or if you are considering about the net no fellowship PhD or no central fellowship or no net mediated fellowship PhD, this can be this can be greater than 70. If you are getting greater than 70 for the uh, other uh, for uh, general category, you might be getting the net qualification at least for this time. Now for OBC, the net GRF qualification might be lying around this region that is 80 to 88. Same can be applied for EWS. Only you can predict uh, plus minus one or plus minus two. This range can be predicted for OBC and EWS. So this is a basic range. You will be uh, Storming into the video, and you will be saying that EWS and OBC categories are different. Yes, I know that they are different, but still the marking difference or the difference between the cutoff will be lying at only plus minus one to two range. So you can predict it to be around uh, 80 to 88 for the OBC category, 
70 to 80 for the net LS for the OBC or the AWS category. And if for net qualification only, you can get, if you get around over the 60, you can be assured of uh, net qualification this time. For SC, it is uh, between 70 to 82. And uh, for both the morning and evening shift, I have not created a difference. We have not created a difference over here because the pattern was almost the same. I have already told the difficulty level was varied by 0.5. Last time, last over, uh, I would say last time only, the difficulty level which we predicted was varied between evening shift and the morning shift. The morning shift was a bit tougher than the evening shift and the evening shift was a bit easier than that of the morning shift. Uh, so there was around 3.5 difference between the uh, difficulty level that, we have that was predicted by us, but this time it is only 0.5. So the question paper level was almost the same, but the difficulty level was much more higher in both the cases. Okay. So for SC or uh, for NetLS it would be around 65 to, uh, 65 to 67, for only net qualification it would be around greater than 55. For ST, uh, greater than 65 for NetJRF, greater than 55 for NetLS, greater than 50 for net uh, fellowship, net, uh, net no fellowship PhD. For others that is the PW category or any other category, it would be greater than 55 for NetJRF, greater than 50 for NetLS and greater than 40 for the net no fellowship PhD. Now, there might be a scene that may arise over here that no cutoff predictor should tell you that we have only indicated that these two cases might get reversed. That is, net LS might go over here due to the fact that CSIR is an exam for, uh, for uh, the students or the aspirants to allow them for pursuing PhD, right? And the second thing that comes in the uh, scheme of the examination is basically providing them the qualification for a lectureship. That is a qualification for assistant professor in colleges and universities that was in India. So as it is a framework only over PhD, so it might happen that JRF would lead at the front, the PhD would come at the second and LS would go at the third position. So it might happen that these two ranges might get switched with each other, that is the net LS and the net no fellowship PhD. So first you can take JRF PhD LS or it may happen like this, JRF LS PhD. So the cutoff ranges may vary like this. But yes, you can be of sure that the cut-offs for CSIR net 2024 June cycle will be going down, down and down. Okay, so what come hone wala hai iska, okay? Bahut hi, bahut hi kam hone wala hai. So you might be sure of this fact. So stay tuned for this video and aap log padhai karte rahiye. Our crash course, or complete course on WB set launch ho chuka hai. Batches have started already. Now if you want to enroll, you can enroll. The link would be provided in the first comment only and I hope that you will share this video with your friends and also with the ones who have already given the data exam and tell them the reality of what, what can be the part of the exam. Thank you and bye-bye. Please do subscribe to our channel and share this video with your love. Bye.